Eat Nuggets game for recap. Well, for the most part, the game was a good game. The first half, Jimmy Butler missed two free throws before the first half was over, and that's what really got me. And I was watching that game for the most part, and I was like, the Heat are so close, they're so close, but they're just so far away. In the first half, Jimmy was pretty aggressive with 14 points. Lowry had 13, Bam with 12. Aaron Gordon was 16. He felt like he was on fire, and at times it felt like he was Steph Curry, even though he finished – three or four from three, but at one point he was three of three. Jokic was 16. Jokic went out in the first quarter with his ankle injury, and then he ended up returning, which was nice to see him return. We'll get into Jokic in a little bit here. Jamal Murray had a very quiet first half with six points. Overall, the game was a good first half for the most part. But I did want to talk about Nikola Jokic from his performance tonight. It wasn't as good as it has been these past two games showing up on the stat sheet, but he's the first player in NBA history with 250 rebounds and 150 assists in a single postseason. It almost felt like earlier in this season, or if it was last year, Jokic had a very similar situation to this where he was the first player to have 500 assists or 500 rebounds in a season with a certain amount of points. This guy just keeps breaking records. We've never seen an NBA center play at the level of Jokic is playing distributing in all three statistical categories points rebounds assists that's why when you're prop bet you're always worried about the PRA well Jokic basically clears every single statistical stat of that now tonight it was a different story but he didn't have to do the load that he was he's been doing this entire series his co-star Jamal Murray had 12 assists 15 15 points 12 assists but it was the bench that stepped up for The Nuggets, not their entire bench, not the entirety of the bench. It was mainly Bruce Brown, who had 21 points. It kind of goes back to last game with Christian Brown, where he had 21 points off the bench. And now Bruce Brown tonight had 21 points off the bench. So it's like Denver's stars with Jamal Murray and Jokic, they don't always have to do everything. It's like you're leading that one guy. you're, You're just needing one guy to step up on the bench. And that's exactly what they got tonight. Bruce Brown was hitting on all cylinders. And maybe he was feeling it because he was back in Miami where he went to college at University of Miami. But for me, moving on to the third quarter, that three from Aaron Gordon was so killer. I mean, at the end of the third quarter, when Miami was right there, it was a 10-point game and then became a a 13-point game. Miami was back to playing that zone again. They were playing, I'm pretty sure it was a 2-3 zone from what I saw watching the game. And then I just caught the highlights again. But man, it's just at times Miami felt like they were so far away, but they were so close. Like they were, they just, they couldn't figure it out. And it was tough because they couldn't get any really production from their role players. They didn't really get any production from their guard play with Gabe Vincent and Strew. Strew had zero points again tonight. Vincent finished with two. So at times you're watching that game and you're like, is Spo going to insert Tyler Hero into the lineup? And I'm starting to think if Tyler Hero was fully healthy, he would be playing in this series because that's a shot creator for you. That's a guy that can run the second part of your offense. Now you can have Gabe Vincent run the first string offense, and then you can have Lowry come in. Lowry was sensational tonight with 13 points off the bench. Now getting minutes in production from Lowry like that is huge. But for me, it's you got to somehow implement Tyler Hero. Maybe into game four, I'm not sure, but you got to do it somehow or some way. I know I'm not sure if he's fully healthy. I don't know if he is, but they have not been able to have a shot creator like that. They haven't had a guy like Tyler Hero this entire postseason, and I think it's starting to catch up to them. But can Miami come back down from 3-1? I mean, it's been it's been done in 2016 with, the Cavs with LeBron they were talking about LeBron and the the Cavs after the broadcast on the broadcast excuse me after the game so it's possible but it kind of goes back to well the Heat don't have Kyrie Irving and LeBron James if Jimmy Butler was fully healthy potentially if Bam was on the level of Kyrie Irving star play wise maybe but I just don't see it and a lot of people were predicting the Nuggets in five before this series started, and it just looks like it's 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 heading in that direction. And the Heat are given everything they have. They are fighting on all cylinders. They are punching the Nuggets in the mouth as much as they can. But sometimes the giant is just too big to overcome. Sometimes that mountain is just too big to overcome. No pun intended because the Nuggets are going back to Denver and the Heat are joining them in the mountains. But Yeah, I mean, for the most part there, I mean, that's really it, to be honest with you. I didn't really see a whole lot 
it did feel like Miami was very close, and I, I had a feel, I, I, I had a feeling they were going to make a run in the fourth when Jokic went out with the fifth foul. That's one thing I do want to talk about before we wrap things up was Jokic's controversial fifth foul. But Miami seems so close, but so far, like I said, at times, it, it, they just couldn't amount a run. And Jimmy was getting to his spots late in the fourth. He was kind of picking his spots. He was getting them in switches. He was getting Jamal Murray down in the block there. He was getting what he wanted while Jokic was out, which was nice to see, but it just wasn't enough. And Denver didn't go away. Jeff Green hit that big three late in the fourth there. Uh, Duncan Robinson at times was showing, you know, his his natural self of his three-point ability, but there were times there down late in the in the possessions where Duncan Robinson was the primary ball handler. And I was like, what is Miami doing? And that's just because Gabe Vincent had an off night. He was with he had two points, but I mean, Caleb Martin was solid for the heat off the bench with 11, 11 and five. So, I mean, but the last point I do want to make here is, is Miami somehow needs to make Tyler Hero into get Tyler Hero into this lineup. And the second thing here, I do want to talk about the BAM goal, the, the BAM uh, bro- broke the rim thing. That was so frustrating because the heat were so close at that point too. I'm not, I don't remember the exact score, but they were close there, but it just goes back to they just felt like they were so far away. But the last point I want to wrap up before we do end this recap here is, is the Nikola Jokic foul on Bam Adebayo. It kind of seemed like they were tangled up. It kind of seemed like they weren't. But that's a really iffy, sticky call, if you ask me. And it kind of goes back to the last clip I said about the NBA is going to call that nine times out of ten. But was that really a necessary foul to call in that situation? I don't think so. And it really didn't affect the Nuggets, which which was huge because those minutes that Jokic was on off the floor for the Heat, they didn't the Nuggets the Nuggets were able to capitalize and the Heat weren't able to capitalize off that. If Jokic is out, those Jokic minutes on the bench, you gotta capitalize somehow or some way. And the Heat weren't able to. They were not able to cut into that lead. It was Jamal Murray hit a big three, but but no. The Nikola Jokic, Bam Adebayo, foul late, Bam, Nikola Jokic's fifth foul, the controversial fifth foul, I don't think that's a foul. And like I said, it goes back to the nine times out of ten. They're going to call that. The refs had their moments tonight. It's just way, the way the NBA is going. And my opinion hasn't changed. That's not a foul. Their arms are tangled up. It, it's It's such an iffy call. It's a call you don't call. And imagine if – that call was called with two minutes left. Or imagine if that call was with the game was extremely close. Imagine how fans would feel then. But they were so tangled up. How are you going to call that in that situation? I don't see it. And if I'm looking at my rule book wrong compared to the next guy down the street that has, that has his rule book of the NBA rules and fouls, that's not a foul. That's just not a foul. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this short little recap of the Heat and the Nuggets game four. Nuggets have taken a 3-1 series lead. Yes, we've heard that story before. We've seen this movie before. Can the Heat come back down from 3-1? to one? Well, it remains to be seen, and we will see you after game five. We'll see you then. 5,280 feet up in the air.